بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين وعنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أهلا بكم في درس جديد في برنامجكم درس على الهواء في مادة اللغة الإنجليزية للصف الثاني عشر اليوم بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى سنتكلم عن مراجعة بسيطة لبعض القواعد في اللغة الإنجليزية Today we are going to talk about past simple and past simple passive First of all, let's have a look at the learning, learning objectives for today. Today, inshallah, you are going to be able to ask and answer questions to complete the task. And at the same time, you are going to review the different usage of the past symbol and the past symbol passive. So our main focus today is about the past symbol and the past symbol passive. First of all, we are going to talk about the past symbol. In the past symbol, we are going to discuss certain things like, you know, what is the regular verbs and irregular verbs? What about, you know, how to make a negative sentence or how to make a question in the past simple tense? First of all, let's talk about the irregular verbs. You have an idea about those things called irregular verbs. What are those, you know, things? Have a look at those. Uh, verbs in here. These, these are called the irregular verbs. If you remember last time we talked about those tenses in here and that we said that the past tense is used to form a past simple sentence. And even it's called sometimes the past simple tense, past simple tense. So we use it to form a past simple sentence. Let's check your understanding of the word. Here we have some present tense or the present tense and we have the past tense of certain verbs in here. Some of them are regular, others are irregular verbs. Now I need you to think and match each past or each present tense with the past tense. So you have one minute to do or less than one minute to do this task. Go through them and try to match them. So let's start with the first verb, which is play, play, played, exactly. What about do? Exactly, did, watch, watched, nice. What about the verb dance? Danced, nice. Drink, drank, very nice. The word or the verb eat. Thanks, at, or it, and uh, work, worked, work, worked, good. Listen, listened, swim, swam, and the last one, show, showed. Very nice. It seems that, you know, it is clear for you right now. And you have noticed something. Some irregular verbs have a different shape or different, you know, even writing when you transfer it from, transfer from, you know, present to the past. Others, you just add ed to them. How to add ed to them? First of all, when to use the past symbol. We use the past symbol to refer to actions that are finished and completed in the past. Something happened and finished in the past. Let's have a look at this sentence. I lived in a small house for one year. I lived in a small house for one year. So I'm saying that I lived. I'm no longer living in a small house. The structure of the sentence, we start with the S, the past form, and the O, the object. So it's only easy or simple, very simple. Just use the past form. This is the way, subject past form and the object s v o what about making a negative sentence in the past simple we just well, there is two ways we can add uh, for example i did not talk well, i can say i did not talk to ahmed yesterday how is it that i 
plus did not plus the infinitive the base form or the infinitive sorry not the past form this is the infinitive here is the infinitive not the past form why is that because we have moved the time to the word did we have moved the time to word did so we came infinitive in here i plus did plus the infinitive in here or did not plus the infinitive plus the o this is how to form a negative sentence in the past symbol remember that we are just summarizing or memora or you know revision this is just a revision for that things you have already learned and there is another thing if we have the word was or were how to make a negative sentence we just add not to it ali was not happy yesterday ali was not happy yesterday good sometimes questions in the past are formed with did if you remember in the last uh, lesson we said that when we form a question we need to move the time to the beginning or before the subject we move the time sometimes we attach it if it's like this one in here it used to be blade we say it we take the ed attach it to do then it will become what did like this one did you play tennis when you were younger did you play tennis when you were younger why there is no ed in here because it's infinitive we have already moved the time to the word did in here this is how to form a very simple question or yes or no question did you play tennis as you can see the infinitive is there did the subject the infinitive and the completion or the all good what about the the w or the word the word where we told you last time if the time is you know in like the word where or was you can move it because it is the time there move it just move it to the beginning of the sentence it used to be you were sad last night the sentence used to be like this you were sad last night we just move the where to the beginning were you sad last night this is how to form a question in using where good what about the wh question the same thing after you finished the yes or no question you just add the wh question first of all make a yes or no question as i told you by moving the time to the beginning of the sentence then you just add the wh question like this one wh did and the infinitive form of the task sometimes question in the past form with wh questions if we have the where also that the same thing just move it before the subject and you can add the wh to form a question in here like this one w wh was or where this is a very simple thing our main concern today is about you know how to to form that ed or how to make an ed uh, verb let's have a look before that the usage of the, these things like in here he said all right i worked to school yesterday the word yesterday refers to the past john lived in paris for 10 years but he or now he lived in paris in, in rome so he is no longer living in paris i bought a new car three days ago the simple past indicate that an action or a situation began and ended in the particular time in the past something happened and finished in the past as we told you but you have to bear in mind this thing sometimes we have the word when like in here rita stood under a tree when it began to rain which one start first but did she run first then they trained or the opposite it says in here with the when clothes happened first it says if the sentence contain when and it has the the past symbol or the symbol past in both clause the action in the when clause be happened first the action in the hub in the when clause happened first 
So what you write two past simple uh, in one sentence using when the when clause happened first. The when clause supposed to happen first. Like in here, a train first, then she stored under a tree. This is the information that you have to keep in mind that when you are using two past symbol, again, two past symbol in one sentence, using when, the, the, the close with when is the one that happened first. Good. Let's test yourself those very simple questions. And I meant to brought those questions that because some students make some mistakes on those things in here. Let's start with one. I to the mall after school. After school. Is it good, gone, or went? Of course, there's nothing called good. Some students, unfortunately, write this one, which is there is nothing called good. So either gone or went. Gun is the past participle. And to have the past participle, you should have at least had or have. There's no, no such thing in here. So the correct one is went. Went. Two. My brother, a pair, uh, an hour ago. This is the past, an hour ago. So we are talking about bus. Is it seen? So, or sees. So is it clear that it is talking about the past. Which one is referring to the past? Yes, this one. This one is referring to the past. Why is that? Because this one is the past participle, while this one is the present. So both of those are, you know, not working with us. Good. Three. Mike visit his grandmother last night. This is a question, as you can see in here. So we say that the question, Look in here. Is it the, the question with are or where or with the did? In here we have the verb, the infinitive. We have the infinitive. So if it is the infinitive, it's clear. It was something in here and we moved it. What, what was that? It was did. It was did in here. So did Mike visit his grandmother last night for two reasons. The first reason that is in the past, and there is an infinitive in here, so we need to use the word did in here. R is not working, and does, it's not working because we are talking about the past. Good. Four, Alex did not last weekend. Did not, what? Since we have did in here, so it means that we are missing what? We are missing infinitive. We are missing infinitive. Which one of those are infinitive? Yes, this one. But teacher, you are talking about the past. This is the past. No, this is not. Yeah, this is the past. But the time in this sentence is where indeed. So we don't need another time. We just need a what? We need a, a infinitive there. Good. Five. Judy and Liz at or at last month's meeting. There's a question in here. A question. Do we have uh, an infinitive in this question? No, there's no infinitive. So there's no movement. There's no th thing like did or does. So is it because it is, you know, last, we only have these two either was or were, because it's talking, talking about the past. Which one of them is the most suitable? Of course, were. Why it is were? Because we are talking about two, about two persons or characters in here, about Goody and Liz. Okay? Uh, let's move to six. We not happy after the sad ending. Which one? is more suitable, where, was, or did. Let's try first, for example, th things that won't work. Of course, was will not work. Why? Because we are talking about we, the pronoun we. Is it did or were? Again, if there is infinitive, we are going to use did. If there is no infinitive, we are going to use were. Is there any infinitive in here? No, there is no infinitive. So the correct answer is 
were. We were not happy after the sad ending. Nice. Have a look at seven. Have a look at seven. You see Goody's new dog yesterday. It is yesterday. So it is in the past. We cannot use R for two reasons. We thought that there is no, because we have the infinitive in here. And the other reason that it is in the present while we are looking for in a sentence, uh, a sentence in the past. So which one is did or do? Of course, it is did because it is yesterday. Thank you, because it is yesterday. So the answer is did. Nice. Last one. It is a question also. It is a question. What you eat for lunch yesterday? Is there any infinitive? Yes, which is eat. Good. So we need either do or did. Okay. Where is that not going to work? Since it is in yesterday, so it is clear that you are going to use the word did. Some of the students may say it is really easy. Yeah, I know. It is sometimes easy when you know the answer. And when you read the question carefully, there is always a clue in the, in the question. There is always a clue in the question that will lead you to the answer. So please, read the question once and twice and divide it and see the time and see the pronoun. Is it singular or plural? Or you know, are we talking in the present or the past? It is really uh, very important to read the question carefully. Now let's move to something that you may like today, which is how to spell the ing and the ed form. For example, you have the word visit, visited. What should we do with that? We add the ed. It's not always the case. It's not always the case. Sometimes there is something that you have to put in mind. What should we do if the verb ends with e? What should we do if the verb ends with the vowel or with, with, ends with the Y? Today we are going to learn these certain things. So I need you to focus with me and we are going to talk about them one by one and then we are going to have some exercise to make sure that you have, you know, comprehend or understand this rule in here. The first rule says that verbs that end in a consonant and E, consonant and E, not double E, again, consonant and E. What should we do? Look at here. Hope, it became hobbing without E. Hobbed, we add, just we add E, or the D, sorry, there. Injure, injuring, and injured. The same thing in here. So the rule says, if the word end in E, drop the E and add ING with the ING. Drop the E and add ING. What about if we are you know, forming it in the past? We just add D because there is already E there. I will tell you something. For example, the word hop in here. Why should we, why should we you know, delete the E hop? Sorry, in here. Why should we delete the E to add you know, uh, ING? Because if you write ING like this, we will have a different sound in here, two vowels together. They will produce a different sound. So you need to delete these things. The same thing with, with the E, D. If you add another E to the E, it will become, to become a longer vowel, which will make another sound. Or you know, This is not, not really things that we are looking for. So again, if the verb end with E or consonant E, with ING, we delete the E. And with the ED, we just add a D. Good. This is the first rule. The second rule is verb that end in a vowel and a consonant. Verb that end in a vowel and a consonant. What's the first one? One syllable verb. One syllable verb, but ends with what? With vowel and a consonant. One syllable. Only one syllable. Like the word stop. One syllable. What should we do? It says if it is one vowel, one vowel, we double the consonant. If it is one vowel, we double the consonant. Like in here, stop, stopping, stopping, stopped, stopped. Okay, rob, 
roping, roping and roped, rope, roping and roped, like this one. As you can see in here, they doubled the consonant. Why? Because it is one syllable or one syllable verb, and it ends with a vowel and a consonant. There is a vowel there. It ends with a vowel, then a consonant, and it is one syllable. So we double them. What if there is two vowels, like in here, one syllable? It is one syllable, but they have, you know, two vowels, two vowels and a consonant, two vowels and a consonant, like this one. What should we do? We don't double the the consonant. We don't double the consonant. If there is two vowel, only one consonant. If there is one vowel, two consonant. If there is two vowel, one consonant. It is really no easy to remember. When one syllable verb, if we have two vowels, only one consonant, and if we have one vowel, we double the consonant. Good. This is in one syllable verb. What about if it is two syllable verb, like the word listen? Li listen or offer. Listen to the stress. If I said listen, listen, I'm stressing the first syllable in here. If I'm stressing the first syllable, only one consonant, the first syllable. Listen, offer, okay? We said listening, listening, offering, listened. We don't do anything, we just add the ing and we add the, the ed without doubling anything. But if the stress in the second uh, syllable, like, you know, begin or prefer, prefer, I'm stressing the second syllable, prefer. So what should we do? As I said, we double the consonant in here. We double the consonant. Like we can. preferring, preferring, beginning, and prefer. So again, if it is two syllable uh, verb, if the stress in the first syllable, we don't double it. We don't double the consonant. If the stress in the second syllable, we double the consonant. Nice. Three, verbs that end in two consonants, in two consonants, normal verb. It's, it, it, if it's end with like, you know, like start, we just add what? We just add the ing and the ed to it. If it's end with two consonants like start, fold, or demand. Starting, folding, demanding, start, started, folded, and demanded. That's it. We just add the ed and we add the ing. Let's have a look at this interesting rule in here, which is number four. What if the verb that end with y? Y. First of all, it is called a semi-vowel. Semi-vowel, yani half and half. It is sometimes a vowel, sometimes not a vowel. What should we do? Have a look at this one. Like the word enjoy. Enjoy. It ends with Y. Like this one. Enjoy. What should we do? Okay. Have a look at those. We have, there is a vowel in here. And we have a vowel in here. Or a semi-vowel. If you just delete it, for example, or, you know, uh, change it, change it to something like, you know, if you add ed, sorry, have a look at that. What will happen there? It's not even, you know, enjoyed, like this one, enjoyed. Why? Because you cannot change it to i. Why is that? Because this is a semi-vowel in here. Semi-vowel is not a vowel right now. If you add the i, it will become a vowel, a vowel, a vowel, three vowels which will be very difficult to pronounce. So Y in here is a semi-vowel, which will stay there because we need it. In here, like this one, we need it. A vowel, semi-vowel, a vowel, a vowel, a semi-vowel, a vowel. Okay, the same thing with pray and play also, the same thing with it. Okay, but what if it is like this one? It ends with, with the study, with the consonant and that Y, consonant and Y. Can we change it? Maybe, maybe we cannot. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at it. If you add ING, just add ING. Because why? Because you cannot delete it and add another I to it. Sorry. Because you're not, you cannot delete it and add an I to it. Why is that? Because you will have two I's. Sorry, because you know, I'm writing above. Two I. I, I, no. 
it's not working like this one I said studying okay you cannot delete this one and add another I because you have already an I in here but what about the ED can we do it let's have a look at it studied yeah it works it works so it says with the ing we just add an ing the ing we don't remove it because we have a consonant before the y and if we have you know with the ed no we change it to i we change the y to i and add the ed as in here said you know uh, if it is preceded by the by a vowel keep the y if it is preceded by a consonant in the case of ing keep the I, but in the case of adding ed, change it to i. Change the y to i. Good. I think it is clear. Maybe in the in the uh, exercise you are going to see how clear is it. And what about the verbs that end with e or i e i e like the word die? What should we do when we add the ing or ed? It is so easy. Die or lie imagine that this is the word die okay if we need to add ing to it die okay ing I'll have a look three vowels so it's not working well what should we do change change it to y and add the ing as in here change it to i or to y sorry and add the ing like dying dying what about the past what about the past we just add the d in the forming the past we just add the d okay so again if the verb end with ie in informing the ing we change the ie to y and add ing and when forming the past we just add the d Let's have a look at this exercise. Here we have some verbs that you should double the consonant and others that you should not double the consonant. Remember the rule, if it is the stress in the first syllable, only one consonant. If the stress in the second syllable, we double the consonant. Let's have a look at the answer. Is already answered there because it says, you know, the stress in the first answered answer listen listen so it is the first syllable stress in the first syllable so we don't we don't double the consonant good open open the stress in the first syllable also open what about plan 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 yes the stress is in the second syllable. So it's so a planning, planning, planning. Good. But the word control, 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 the stress in the second syllable. So we double the L and in here we double the N. And the word offer, offer, the stress in the first syllable. So we don't double the R. And Remit, 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 permitted. Good. So we double the D and prefer, prefer the stress in the second syllable. So we double the R in here. I think it is making it, you know, more clear for you right now. Let's have a look at this activity. Now I need you to uh, form the ING and the ed at the same time the ing and the ed at the same time the first one is done for you let's have a look at the word plan plan have a look at it what should we do it ends with what mm -hmm. planning we double the consonant here why is that because it is you know, uh, so one syllable, a two syllable verb, plan, and you know, it's a two syllable, the stress in the yeah, plan, as we said, uh, it is two syllable verbs, uh, the second syllable is stressed. So we double the consonant. 
rain rain what should we do with that rain raining without doubling anything why is that because it is one syllable two vowels two vowels we say that when it is one syllable with two vowels we don't you know double the uh, consonant good have a look at this one it ends with e so it is really clear that we delete the e and we add the ing and the ed verb that end with e have a look at this one one syllable with the vowel there tapping and tapped why is that because it is one syllable verb with one vowel so we double the consonant one syllable with one vowel we double the consonant uh, enter enter entering and entered without you know doubling anything why is that because it is two syllable the stress is in the first syllable so one consonant only here is we have talked about it prefer prefer why is that yeah preferring we double the r why is that because it is two syllable verb but the stress is in the second syllable the stress is, is in the second syllable what about the word translate translate have a look there exactly we deleted the e and we add the ing and we add the e the d sorry in the past but why is that because the verb ends with e here's the word die we talked about it what should we do when we you know form the ing what should we do with the d with the d because it ends with the e we just add an e a d sorry what about the ing like this one dying we change the i e to y and we add the ing because it ends with e also i e employ have a look there why but before the y there is a vowel what should we do employing employing and employed we just add the e t okay now we are going to have a break don't go away stay with us Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about the past simple. Let's move to the past simple passive. Okay, let's have a look at these pictures and sentences in here. Now match these sentences to the picture, to the right picture. Which sentence is, and which one of them is, you know, grammatically incorrect. So each sentence of those describe a picture. Okay, let's read them and see which one you know, describing which one. Is it picture A or picture B? One says, the girl hit the ball. The girl hit the ball. Which one is them? of them is this sentence is referring to? Yeah, it is A. Thank you. What about two? It says, the ball was hit by the girl. The ball was hit by the girl. Which one? Which one received the action? Okay. The ball was hit by whom? By the girl. So it is also talking about the picture, picture A. Why is that? Because the ball received the action. Who hit the ball? The girl hit the ball. What about three? The girl was hit by the ball. Now, the girl was hit by the ball. Which one of them is this one? Yes, this is B. Why is that? Because the girl received the action and the ball, you know, hit the girl. Nice. Four, the ball hit the girl. The ball hit the girl. Is it B? It is very clear. The girl was hitting the ball. The girl was hitting the ball. Which one of them? It is A. It is A. Okay, what about the last one? The girl was hit the ball. 
the girl was hit the ball. This one is the incorrect one. There's something wrong with that. There's some, the girl was hit the ball. No, there's something wrong with that. There's something missing, missing, which is the word by. The word by in here, the girl was hit by the ball, yeah. But like this one, it's ingrammatical, you know, correct. Or it is grammatically incorrect. Nice. So from this activity, you can see that some of those sentences say refer that the the doer is the girl or the one who hit the other one the girl hit the ball. While others say that or other sentences say that the ball hit the girl. There is a big difference in, in the meaning, of course. Some of them active, some other of them are passive, but you know they have different meaning. Let's have a look at the past simple and the past simple passive. Have a look at this car, for example. Muhammad, for example, was driving his car when the smoke started going on from the car. He was, you know, shocked that he, you know, he couldn't go to work. So that happened yesterday, for example. He called his, his, his you know, boss or the manager at work and he said that, I am sorry, I couldn't came, the car was broken. The car was broken. No, the car was broken. What's that? Someone break the car? No. The car itself was broken. Something happened to the car. Something happened to the car. He didn't cause that thing. So sometimes we need, we know, you need to say that not the car did something, but something happened to the car. Something happened to the car. This is called the the passive voice, the passive voice, that something, someone received the action, something received the action, happened to him, like this one. Have a look at this TV, it is broken. In the past symbol we say someone broke the TV, someone broke the TV, that person we, that whom we don't know came and he broke the TV. So the TV received the action, the TV received the action, and you can say the TV was broken by someone. The TV was broken by someone. So the TV now received the action by that person. What happened there? As you can see, the word TV moved to the beginning of the sentence. The, sub the object became the subject. And something happened also with the, you know, the, the object having become the subject. And we say that something happened to the verb. The word broke became was broken was broken. So what is the difference between or difference between the uh, past simple and past simple passive or past passive? The first thing that we move the O to the S, or the, or the object to the subject, and we have made some change in, in the verb things. We have was or were with the past participle. So how to form it? Really easy. S was or were plus the past participle. Again, S, which is the subject, plus was or were, depending on the subject, plus the past participle, which shows you know, who did that thing. And sometimes we can use the word by there. Okay, like this one, the cake was eaten by Ali. The cake was eaten by Ali. Who received the action? The cake received the action. Who ate it? Ali ate that cake. But we start with the word cake. Why is that? We are going to discuss what are the reasons of using such, you know, uh, passive in our work. But before that, let's remind you of the structure of that sentence. We said that the object moved to the subject, as in here, and sometimes the subject moved to the object if we use the word by and we have changed the verb from the past symbol to the past uh, passive why how to how to form it like this one the word the verb to be plus the past participle so it is it is past passive so it is clear either was or were if it is past passive okay be or the verb verb to be plus the past participle and in here it says that not all verbs can 
be used in a past passive, like in this one, like in here, happen, sleep, come, seem. Not all the verbs that you know could you, you can change it to a passive voice. Some other that cannot you know be changed. Why? Because the meaning of them couldn't happen. For example, like you know, happen. You know, the accident happened. No one can make it happen or whatever, you know, can, you know, receive the action. No, it happened. No one can receive the action of happening. The same thing with sleep, the same thing with come and some other words. Now, when to use the passive? When to use the passive? As you can see from, this, from the picture in here, this one was kicked out or was, you know, asked to leave. To emphasize the subject, Sometimes is it to emphasize the subject that fulan or the person, that one did that action. It would say, or happened to, to that one. Like in here, Sami was told to leave. Not Ali, not Muhammad, Sami was told to leave. So to emphasize the subject, to emphasize the subject. And when to use it again, to talk about general truth, a general truth something happened or something was has been done whatever like this one the earth was occupied by dinosaurs long time ago the earth was occupied by dinosaurs long time ago from this sentence you can see the word how to form it this to be was or were and the past participle like this one this was or were with the past participle sometimes we can use the word by sometimes uh, you know we cannot or we don't have to to use it good this is how to form a sentence in the past passive another usage of the passive is to when we want to to be unclear about something for example it said a suitcase was found in the airport a suitcase was found in the airport I'm not talking clear which suitcase, uh, what about that suitcase, something wrong with that suitcase, for example. So, you know, to, to, to be unclear or vague about the subject. Like in here, a suitcase wasn't found or was found at the or airport. I meant to, to make it in negative to show you how to, to make a negative sentence in the past passive. Is it really clear? We just add not to was, like this one. The subject, then was plus or wasn't or weren't plus the past participle. That's it. Just wasn't or weren't. Nice. Have a look at this one. Another usage is what is to uh, talk about an agent that is unknown. We don't know the door. Someone stole the house. The house was stolen. The house was stolen. I don't care about the person who stole it. I care about the house that was stolen. So, what was stolen from our house last night? Or when was the house stolen? I don't care about the person who stole it. I don't know him. I just care about the, uh, the, the one or the thing that received the action. I meant to make them in questions to show you how to form a question in such thing. Have a look. What is the difference between those two questions? Yeah, even information. Like in this one, look, have a look at this. If we form it, WH, then was plus the, the, the past participle. And this is the O. In here, no, have a look there. Was in here while the stolen or the past participle is in here. Why is that? Okay, the formation in here, WH, was, and BB. In here, no, WH, the BB, then the completion, then the, uh, sorry, in here, the, the B, then here the BB. Why is that? If you are asking about the subject, you are referring to something else. If you are asking about the object, you are referring to something else. In here, which one is referring to the subject? What was stolen from the house? Yes, this one is the object. Why well, you are asking about the subject in here. And we talked about this one in the last grammar session. And we said that when you are asking about the subject, it is a different thing. When you are asking about the object, it is a different thing. So, in general, to ask about the object, WH was and the completion, then you have the 
the past participle, like this one. How to form it? When was the school built? Who or how was oil discovered? By whom were those books written? Good. Let's have an exercise, and I need you now to focus and choose the correct answer. This one is really similar to your examination or to your coming examination, in, in which you are going to have two multiple choice, and you are going to choose the best or the correct answer there. Choose the correct answer. It says, first one says, Microsoft either was founded or founded by Bill Gates in the 1975. Is it the past symbol or the past simple passive? Have a look at those one. Yeah, the word by can gives you or can give you a lots of you know things. Yeah, it is talking about sometimes not always. Because we are going to talk about it right now. Sometimes it refers to the past uh, passive, past passive. And here it is a past passive was found because Microsoft haven't or hasn't found itself. No, someone found who found it. Bill Gates or Bill Gates found that Microsoft company. Good. Why did I say that not always by refers to the past participle, or sorry, the past passive? Let's have a look at this one. In the past, sellers navigated or were navigated by stars. The word here, by. In here, it says that someone created, but in here, no, using star. There's a different, big difference in here. So, sellers navigated or were navigated who navigate the sellers, okay? The seller, so this is the normal sentence, S-V-O. So, past symbol. The answer is the past symbol here. So that in the past, sellers navigated by stars, using, st using the stars in here. Good. The word trade organization, W-T-O, found or was founded in 1999. There is no buy in here. No word by, but from the logically, who found the other one? Someone found the organization. So it is the past passive was founded. Past passive was founded. My friend lost or was lost her purse last week. No, both of them would work if there is no word her purse in here. He could get lost, yeah? and he could lose something. So he lost, she lost her, her purse last week. She lost her purse. Good, we are almost you know, about to, to finish. We have some exercise, more exercise in here. The company's new product did not sell or wasn't sold well. Is it the, the product itself selling itself or someone is selling it? Yes, wasn't sold well someone was selling that product it's not the product it's selling itself and again a new planet in the solar system discovered or was discovered last night of course it was discovered someone discovered it not the planet itself mobile phones did not create or were not created until the until few few years ago of course someone found it someone created it uh, in here, because my visa has expired, I prevented or I was prevented from re-entering the, the country. I, did I prevent someone or someone prevented me? Yes, I was prevented. I received action. I received action. Good. Our company sent or was sent Mr. Uh, Karim to London last week. Who sent the other one? Is it? Mr. Karim sent the company or the company sent Mr. Karim? No, yes, the company sent Mr. Karim, so it is a normal one. So it is sent. How many people injured or were injured in the accident last night? What is the difference between injured and were injured? Injured, the people caused to injure someone. They go and try to injure or hurt someone. No, they received the action. So we are injured in the, in the last uh, night accident. Same thing in here. The house next to us, the house next to us, damaged or was damaged in the storm? Yeah, 
this was damaged because it, the house didn't damage anything. It was damaged. I offered or I was offered the job, but I refused. Did I offer the job or someone offered to me? Yeah, it says I refused. So it means that someone offered to me and I refused it. So I was offered the job. I asked or I was asked some difficult question at the interview. Yes, I was asked because there is nothing, nothing to remember that I, you know, I asked them or asked someone. I was asked. In here, the word them shows that I asked them or I was asked them. No, I asked them to. I asked them to. Uh, or some difficult question at the at the interview yesterday. Our last activity or exercise. I asked or I was asked to make a presentation at at the conference to make shows that I was asked to make. I didn't ask Ali to make or ask Fulan to make or someone to make. No, I was asked to make a presentation at the conference. And here we have come to the end of our lesson today. I hope it was really useful and fruitful for you. Till that time, keep safe. See you inshallah next time.